Welcome back to Ride JBI. This is JB. Today we are doing an update video on how to install the JBI suspension WP AER48 Pro Fork DIY kit. Um, it is also called the JBI suspension Exact 48 Pro Fork DIY kit. WP changed the naming branding of the fork um, about two years ago, but it's pretty much the same thing. So Forgive me if I accidentally use AER48 or Exact48 interchangeably as I refer to the WP 48mm production air fork that has been stock on the bikes since 2017 and has seen a few revisions over the years. This video is focusing on the 2023 KTM and Husqvarna models that have the newest generation of this WP Exact48 AER air fork. Down here, this is the newest version of the 2023 WP AER damping cartridge. As you can see, it is very similar in design as the previous year. The main thing that sticks out is we can see that this bottoming cup has been added to the bottom of the damping cartridge rod, as that is not there on the previous version. On the 2017 to 2022 models, in order to get to the mid valve component assembly in this damping cartridge, Ride JBI recommended that you would remove the rebound clicker housing nut, that is this nut here, and the lock nut, that is this nut here, from your cartridge rod, and then push the rod through the cartridge cylinder, thus allowing you to reach the mid valve. that piece right there. It's a little loud today. We got a lot of planes taken off at the airport above our shop. Well, when WP added this bottoming cone onto the cartridge damping rod, they also used a ton of Loctite and heavy torque in order to ensure that this bottoming cup never comes loose. So while this can be removed with proper tooling and lots of heat, there's also going to leave a lot of Loctite on the threads and it'll surely damage the seal if we were trying to remove the cartridge rod through the seal head like we do on the previous version. So instead we're going to leave this assembly together and we're going to remove the snap ring, remove this black piece and that'll allow us to get to these two flat faces and we will unthread what we call the cartridge cylinder head from the cartridge cylinder. So before I do that, I'm going to get this cartridge mounted up into our vise. I'm going to move our compression assembly just like we would in our previous versions as the install is identical to those. And then we're gonna get this mounted up in order to remove this. All right, so I have the cartridge fixtured in our vise. Not everybody's going to have a vise like this. So what I want to point out is I don't really have the cartridge clamped that tight because it is round and the walls of this cartridge cylinder are very thin. So mainly I'm just using this vise to hold the cartridge in place for me. I'm still going to utilize my fork cap tool as a way to hold the cartridge from spinning as I remove our compression assembly. Now the reason I point this out is because this is a very good way to do it if you don't have this and if you have a vise that has parallel jaws. So if you're using this, be very, very low on your torque because when you clamp a round object and parallel jaws, um, let's find the other cartridge we got for demo. If we clamp this round object on these parallel jaws, we're gonna be applying a lot of force just on two sides of this, and it's gonna easily out of round. So if you do use this, clamp it very softly, just so that way you can hold a fork cartridge. And then utilize your fork cap tool as the way of holding the cartridge from spinning 
as you remove the compression assembly. So again, this isn't torqued very much in there at all. I'm going to use the fork cap tool with one hand and the compression removal tool with the other in order to safely remove it. All right, we have unthreaded our cap. We can see the O-ring has popped up. So now the easiest way to get that out is we're going to push up on our cartridge rod at the bottom. Now do it slow because you can feel some pressure against. If you do it fast, you're going to shoot that cup out the top and you're going to get oil everywhere. So go all the way up until it stops. Boop. There it goes. Now let's go back up and see what we got. Awesome. So now another reason not to clamp this too tight is if you do have this clamped too tight, it's going to be really hard to pull this out. So I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. Usually I use two. But the main takeaway is that as we pull this out, we're creating a vacuum underneath this. So it wants to suck this back in. So take your time. Kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull up. Stop for a second. Let the pressure equalize. And then wiggle it back and forth and pull up a little more. Let the pressure equalize. And you can kind of work your way out. The reason you want to do this slow is you don't want to yank it out really fast and damage one of the O-rings or piston bands that is located on this compression assembly because you'll drag it against one of the threads or sharp inner corners. So one hand, it's a little tricky. Whoop, there we go. So we got it out. Again, use two hands, don't do what I'm doing. And cool, so now we have our compression assembly. The install on this is identical to our 2020 to 2022, sorry, 2021 to 2022 models. So please reference that original video that we have. Now, one takeaway is we are going to replace this nut, sorry, we're going to replace the spacer underneath this nut, but keep that spacer handy because we are going to reuse it on your mid valve assembly. We're going to use this spacer as spacing. So that way when you put the mid valve assembly on and we go to put the nut back on, everything is going to line up just perfect. Here's looking at our empty fork damping cartridge. We now have it mounted upside down. We've pumped our rod a bunch of times to empty out all the oil inside of it. And now we have it fixtured in our clamp. At Ride JBI, we have specific clamps for clamping this diameter sized tube. These are important because we can clamp this tube very strongly and securely without distorting the shape or out of rounding it. This is again very important because the walls of this cylinder are very thin. Now I understand most people may not have these clamps. You can buy them from us. These we can provide and sell at additional cost. Or there is another workaround for those that are a little more of uh, do-it-yourselfers slash backyard engineers. Um, another way to hold this cartridge from spinning is to use our fork cap tool. What we would do is we would mount this tool in our vise as so. And then we'd stick our cartridge into the fork cap. And this way, it'll prevent the tube from spinning. I'll show you a better um, display of that in just a moment. Next, we wanna get off this snap ring right here. This comes off very, very easy. I recommend using two hands. I'm holding the camera with my other hand. So that's why it went flying, but do use two. So that way you don't have to go digging for the snap ring and find where it went. So we got this guy back, set it nice, set it back inside of our bin. Now that, that we have that, now that we have that out of the way, lift this up and you'll see that we have two flat surfaces on opposite sides. And we're going to use those surfaces as our mounting point for our wrench 
or here at Ride GBI, we like to use knit picks because the jaws stay parallel when you open it and they have a seven to one leverage ratio. So what that means is we can adjust these very precisely to fit the exact size that we need. Mm, that feels awesome. These are available at Amazon. Again, the company name is Nip Picks. Now, before we go and start torquing on this, there is a lot of Loctite on this cartridge cylinder seal head. So we are going to warm this up first to loosen that Loctite. Now, keep in mind this piece is made out of plastic. So what we like to do is take a rubber band or a zip tie, put this plastic piece up there and put that rubber band or zip tie right here. So that way it holds this plastic piece out of the way while you heat up this region. Now, another tip, there is a seal located inside of here. It seals around our cartridge rod. If you get this too hot, you will melt this seal. Not the end of the world, we have replacement ones, but ideally, don't melt it. Now, heat goes up. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate much of our heat in this region and around this uh, recess cut. Because as we heat it up, the heat will move upward. And we're keeping some good distance away from our seal that is on the inside. I'm going to take a pause, get this thing mounted up for heating, and then tune you guys back in. Okay, before we move this cartridge cylinder seal head, I wanted to show you the alternative method for another way of holding this cartridge from spinning while you spin out our cartridge seal head. So again, if you don't have the shaft ball clamps like we showed over here, this is an alternative method. It's not the recommended one, but it does work and usually it works best with another set of hands and a helper. So as you'll see, I have the fork cap wrench mounted inside of the vise. And what we can do is then we can interface our cartridge into there, and that is going to prevent this from rotating. It usually works best with two people. You can have one person pushing and holding this cartridge into the fork cap wrench so it maintains a good fit. <clears throat> and then have the other person heating up this end and then beginning to unthread the cartridge cylinder seal head. The reason this isn't the recommended way of doing it, one is the cartridge can slip in here and get damaged. And or if you don't heat this up enough, by this I mean the cartridge seal head, what may happen is this lighter silver piece may start unthreading from our cartridge tube, this darker gray piece. And we don't want that to happen. So again, this isn't the recommended way of doing it, but it does and can work. So we're going to remount this back up like we did and get out our cartridge cylinder seal head. So that way we can get to our mid valve assembly.